We are live, yeah. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stream. So I'm just going to do a couple of maintenance settings here. Let me see. Uh, I should go to studio mode. I hope this the stream really works this time. I had um, have an had a internet update or upgrade. And I hope the stream is working now because I had such such a damn slow internet connection. I couldn't do any live stream. So let's see if this works right now. Okay, let's go to this studio mode. Boom. So I'm going to wait until a couple of you jump into the stream. Uh, don't forget to say hi. Be nice. Stay a while and listen. And we're going to start um, start coding just in a couple of minutes. Okay, so I'm just going to set up a couple of things. I'm going to show you the project for today, and hopefully, hopefully you enjoy it. I think it's a pretty cool project. We're going to use HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Actually, either Bootstrap or CSS. I'm going to let you choose what you wish that I should use. Make a rhyme every time. That's not funny. Okay, let's close this one up. So if you're new in the chat section, then please say hi. Please be nice. Don't uh, make any strange comments. I'm trying to keep my streams always clear and clean. Uh, I also would love to hear from you guys if you can hear me right and if the video quality and the audio quality is working correctly that would be excellent so let's just see what we have here I'm going to change this to the left yeah that's perfect hey i don't need you also how's everybody doing hope you're all well and healthy we do live in difficult times today and do have to take extra care of your health. Nobody wants to get into the hospital. Nobody wants to be sick. I know, but times are hard today. So let's just see. Boom, I'm going to prepare this one also going to prepare uh, let's see no don't want to go there but I want to go here So once again, those that are new in the chat, please say hi. And also, I would love to hear how the sound quality and the video quality is. I really need some feedback. This is this is my first live stream for like forever. And I really need some feedback on how this works. Yeah, I think we're live. Okay. just waiting for a couple of people to jump into the stream and then we're going to get going so today's stream just for those of you who don't know today is black friday i'm going to go a i'm going to do a live code live coding session i'm going to create a web application we're going to create a leave request form we just take a sip of a coffee using html javascript and for styling I think I'm just going to use Bootstrap, but I'm still not sure about that. Also, this also I'm going to plug a couple of my courses, all of my courses actually. All of my courses are off today because it's Black Friday, so I'm going to leave a link for each of the course down in the description below. Just click on it. And uh, yeah, if you like any of them, then get some, get some. 
So if everyone's new to the chat, please say hi. Boom. That's in there. Let me just see how it would look if I would change my screen up. So here I'm going to change to this. Oh yeah, that's that's pretty okay for now. And this should be okay, they should be here. Hello, hello everyone, hello. Okay, so I'm going to blend in the project now. <clears throat> That's we're going to work on today. Let's switch transition. Boom. There's a project. Okay, let me just make it larger. So we're going to create a leave request form, but it's not only the form, it will also execute. Ooh, let me just change something up. Let's quickly change something up in the code. Uh, and I'm also going to show it without this. So we're going to execute here a form request for, let's say you're requesting a leave for your boss, a couple of days off. You're going to fill in your first name, last name, then your employee ID, whatever that is, your remaining vacation days, and then the days that you wish to take leave. For example, you can take from the 29th, this would be from Monday, you're going to take the entire week. So this would end on, just take 20, well, just click on the 30th. 29 and we're going to go to freeze so one week. No, let's move even further. Let's go to the, the 10th because this is interesting. We have now, wait, yeah, the 10th. So we are over a weekend. Well, let me just first of all show you how this would work. So if you would request this, there could be two possibilities. You will send your request, there will be your name, your or your identifications, how long you would request your leave days, so how many leave days you would request, from what time, uh, for what period, and at what time you just uh, did the request. Okay, and now the admin or your boss or whoever is taking care of this could either approve or decline. So if you decline it, they're going to get this sad face. No. But if it would approve it, then you would get this approve face. Boom. That's basically it. Make this a bit larger. And now I would. Okay, so let me comment in because we also have a couple of verification as you see, as I submitted this, it automatically works. That's not what I want. I want to have a couple of verifications in there. And that's what I, that is why I used, uh, let me just see. You sir should be up here. You should be commented out and you should be commented back in. Okay, so if I would now try to submit it, I would get this alert and it would tell me that, hey, you need to fill up a couple of things. So let's say Norbert, any heart, uh, some kind of identification number. Now you can only type in here numbers. We cannot type in here anything else. You can only use the letter E. And then let's say we have 21 days left. And that's a lot of days. And let's say we have 15 days left. And let's try now doing the 29th till the 10th. Okay, so if I submit this, also, this is including the first day and it ends on the last day. So let's submit it. So you see, we got our name, our last name, our first name, our ID, the initial leave days that we had, the start date and the end date that we want to, and our vacation, then the leave request days. So how many days are we requesting? We're requesting 10 days. And then we will remain with five days only. Okay, and we submitted it on this date at this hour. Okay, so if we got approved, woo, just got approved, then yeah, that's basically it. If, would, if it would be declined, then you would get the, the other thing. 
Okay guys, so that's basically it for the project. I think this is a pretty cool project. Hope you will enjoy it. And also if you're getting into this into the live stream, please hit that thumbs up button in order to help that user with other algorithm. Also share this stream with others or share the video with others if you're watching it later on after the stream ended. And yeah, let's let's get into the project. Well, let me just see. Also, I would love to hear from you guys in the chat and girls if you want me to use HTML, if you want me to use regular CSS or Bootstrap. Or what I would much rather use Bootstrap for this because it's a pretty simple thing. There's not much to style here, and CSS would be just uh, overkill. I, I would much rather use Bootstrap honestly, but it's up to you. And we're going to wait just a couple of minutes, and it, if if there's no decision until then, then I'm going to use Bootstrap. So let's just see. Uh, also, check out the courses down below. They're all 98 or 89% off. Woohoo! 89% off. Okay. As you can see, this is completely reacted. You can make it a really small form. Oh yeah, and you have and if you have any kind of questions, then please don't forget to ask them anytime I will start. But only regarding this project. I don't want to answer some kind of yes, please delete this. Uh I just don't, don't want to have that break in there and answer some React or some kind of object orient object oriented programming or Node.js questions <clears throat> if you're actually in this project. So I would really much love if you would ask project specific questions. Okay, so I would say that we get started and obviously after the stream ends, this the entire code will be in the description below when, when it's going to be published on YouTube. I think it's going to take a day or so. You can download the entire code then later on and with this being said, you know what? Let's actually get started. So I'm just going to create here a new folder. Let's call it uh, form. Oh, not there. Form, and I'm going to drag and drop it into Visual Studio Code and let's get started. No, I don't want to save that. Okay, let's go ahead and create our index.html file. This is live, okay? Any mistakes I make, it's it's in there. It's forever. <laughs> it's no editing. Um, let's start with the boilerplate. Let's hit shift exclamation mark. I'm on a Mac, but it really doesn't matter. And I'm using Visual Studio Code. It does have a couple of extensions. As you can see, I'm using a color theme. Uh, all of my extensions are in a separate video, everything that I use. Please check out that video. I think it's pretty helpful. And let's get started. Let's all go ahead and open up Bootstrap. Actually, I'm going to also let the, the project open up here. Let's go to Bootstrap. Boo. Bootstrap. It's a bit larger. Actually, let's just click on get started and I'm going to grab onto the CDN. Move it back here. Let's copy it above a title. And this should already work. Okay, let's op so open this up using Live Server. Live Server is just an extension. Visual Studio Code is going to create your own server. The user, come here. And let's also create our index R script file. So let's just call it main.js. And I'm going to link it up, go into the body, script, source, main.js, and it should be up and running. Let's also inspect and open up the console. 
Okay, there's a console. Let's do a console log of object. See the string. There we go. Script file is linked up. Okay, so let's get started with our form. So I'm going to zoom out a bit. There's a form. Also checking my code here. <laughs> so the form. Um, pum, 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 pum. Let's start up by creating a div of container. So uh, the entire form will be in a div of container because as you saw, when I made this a bit larger, it does have a couple of margins and paddings to the body. And this is because I'm using a general container class which already has something in it. What just happened? Okay. So let's create the class of container. Uh, let's see, I'm also going to give this, let me actually put first of all something in there so you can see it. So let's create a section then with the class of leave request. Okay, and within here, I'm going to create a, let's just create an H1 with form. I'm going to change this later on. Now, there's our form. Does it already have bootstrap in it? Yeah, I think it does. Let me just check this. Uh, yeah. If I would do a class of display dash one, and this is not working. Uh -huh. And we already can troubleshoot something. So why isn't Bootstrap working? Maybe because I spelled it wrong. Display. That could always be a cause, <laughs> spelling problems. Okay, so now it's working. So we have Bootstrap linked up. I could actually close this so we have more space. Let's take a sip of water. Okay, I'm going to give this a couple of classes. So I want to push this down. You see it has a margin up here. So I'm going to use here a M margin top of five. Now, not a plug, I do have a complete bootstrap course. It's down in the description below, please check it out. And let's also give it a LG of auto. So I'm going to, when it's in a <clears throat> large display, then it's going to have an automatic, it's going to have margins automatic. So margin, LG, and auto. Okay. And let's see, I'm also going to give it the all around padding of five and then a shadow class. Shadow, and there we go. Should now have a shadow. So there's our form, okay? You can clearly see it. Oh, let's also give the body a class. Class of background color. Actually, I don't have that. Uh, hmm. Ah, oh, let's just forget about it for now. Okay, so let's move on to the section. Within the section, I'm going to create our header, which is just going to be this right here. Make sure. Close up bootstrap, we don't need it anymore. So I'm going to delete this H1. Actually, I'm just going to push it down. Let's create our header tag. Let's give this the class of text and center. So the entire text is going to be in the header. Center is going to be centered. Why isn't this working? Center text. Oh, because I don't have anything in here. So let's move our H1 into the header. 
there we go now it has a text center and let's also give it a margin from the bottoms and b of five before our h1 we're going to create a icon tag so i'm going to create an i with a now should i use booster classes or font awesome mm, use both yeah let's actually use both i want to have as much content as you can handle here in for you guys so let's go to bootstrap again i'm gonna put this up here so if you go to bootstrap they also have icons now you just click on icons up here then you again need to see the end for this so you just go down 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 completely down here and there's the cdn so copy you could also install it using mpn but i wouldn't suggest that <laughs> I really wouldn't suggest that. So let's go up here. Let's type in a comment of bootstrap icons CDN. Let's paste it in. I'm going to copy this comment and paste it up here. It's just bootstrap CDN. Now, because we're already here, let me also include a font awesome CDN's font awesome. Now, again, all of the links are down in the description below. So if you go to cdnjs.com and search for, for Font Awesome, or just type in to Google Font Awesome CDN, and then you can copy the link tag and go in here. Let's type another comment of Font Awesome CDN, and let's, ooh, not in here paste it in afterwards. Okay, so I can close. Mm, let's go to font awesome font awesome. And also here to bootstrap. So let me show you the icons. Uh, the icon would be let's just type in here user. Hello, sir, please. Okay, so user. Now you can choose whatever I can you want I would let's just choose this one was it this one I'm going to click on it open up in a new tab uh, select the, the icon and just paste it in here Boom. there we go so we have this small icon right up here but you can still manipulate it let's just say we're going to add a class it of display display and one and boom we have a larger icon if it's still not large enough, then you could also do something like style and let's increase the font size with 10 RAM. And then it's going to be much larger. Now you can change the color of the icon by typing in text and let's say primary. Okay, and then we get a blue icon. You could also use secondary color. You can use danger color, whatever color you wish. I'm going to use the primary color. We don't need you. Go away. Okay. <clears throat> okay, let's also increase the font of this form and let's also change it then later on. I'm going to also give it a H1 as a class going to give it a much stronger font and now let's change this to leave request form okay there we go so that's basically it for our header let me just check something here okay that's working also check the stream yeah, everything seems to work to be working fine. So next up, let's 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 uh, let's create a form. So right under a header, type in a comment form, and within here I'm going to create a form tag. It's going to have an ID of mm, leave request form. Leave request. And form, 
and I'm not going to give it any kind of action, any kind of class, nothing, just this ID. So now we can go ahead and create our labels and inputs. Now these are groups. I'm going to show you that, well, font, uh, not font awesome. <laughs> Bootstrap really works with groups when it comes to forms. But I'm going to do something else. I'm going to use the row system here. So I'm going to create a div with a class of MB. Actually, let's do row. And then I'm going to also give it a class of MB free. So margin bar and free. So hit, hit enter. Within here, I'm going to create a label tag. Label and it's going to have a class of form control. Or form label, form label. Okay, now not going to give this anything. So what it's for in the form label, we're going to type in name. And after our label, we're going to now create a, a div with the class of column. So just typing class column and within here, I'm going to have our input tag. Now this is going to be a input tag of type text and it's going to have the class of form control. Okay, and there's our, let me just check something, form label and form control. Nah, I don't like it. So let's just leave it as it is. Uh, let's just give the placeholder. It's going to be first name. And last thing that I need here is a ID because I'm going to grab onto this later on using JavaScript. So ID first name. Okay, so that's basically it. Now I'm going to repeat this, just going to copy. Let's see, this opens here, this closes here. I'm going to copy this part right here, paste it in and change it to, actually I don't need the label. What I do need is just this column because as I type in column, and they are in a row class. So these are these two, these two, these three. <laughs> these two divs with this label are in this row class. And when they have the class of column, then they are going to be two separate columns. So in one row, we are going to have two columns. If I do a third one, then I would have a third column. Okay, but we just need two. So this is going to be uh, last name. Just select both of them, last name, ooh, last. And there we go, there's a last name. So the name with first name and last name. And we're done with this part. Next up is going to be, uh, should I also use comments here? Yeah, let's use comments. So the very first one is going to be name. Let's see, this closes up here. I'm going to also close it. Then I'm going to have uh, the ID. I think it was the ID of the employee ID and the remaining days. So let me just copy, can I copy it this way? Yeah, I'm going to copy this way for the comments. So employer ID and remaining days. So it could be here. Now for this, we're going to repeat exactly as what we did up there. We're going to create a class of row with a class of MB free. So margin bar and free. This is going to include uh, two columns. So we're going to create column times two because we're going to have two columns. Okay, let's hit save. Now, we are ours. Let me see how, how, how can I do this more easily? Mm, so I have the columns, I have the labels, but the labels are in different columns. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I could do this. So just hit control Z to go back. I'm going to put this in a parenthesis because 
Uh, now this is going to include a label with a class of form label plus a input tag <clears throat> with a class of uh, form control. Control and let's see, it's going to also have, I could do the ID. Now that's it. So now if I hit enter, it's going to give me, wait a second. So I'm going to go out here and multiply it again. Okay, so now if I hit enter, it's going to give me these two labels and inputs. So let's get rid of the four. <clears throat> uh, let's type in here for the label employee ID. Let's use this type of number. Then I'm going to give this also the ID of employee ID. So let's start with ID employee ID and the placeholder for employee ID. Your employee ID. Good. Now for the next input tag, again, I would need the employee ID and Hey, we're missing a label here. No, no, we're not missing it. There we go. So we're going to have here the remaining days. And this is also going to be a number. And then we're going to have here, let's say for control, uh, ID of that I use here remaining days and then for the place so I'm just going to copy this in because I don't want to type so much boom there we go Okay, next up is going to be start and end day for our leave. So these two, and then we're almost done. So I'm just going to copy this part. I'm going to need another row. So this ends here. Actually, I could just close it, copy, paste it in. And instead of number, we're going to have date. date. I'm going to change the IDs and uh, the labels first of all. Let's say start date. And end date. Let's also use a small tag here. Small tag, <clears throat> sorry about that, with the class of muted text or text muted. And I'm terribly sorry if you can hear my daughter crying, but yay. Okay, we're going to have here now the including last day and up here we should i'm just going to copy this small because this is going to be the first day so including first day okay so i think we have everything covered here now let me change the id so we're going to have your date from control employee uh it's going to be end date ah sorry about that 
start date. <laughs> and we don't need a placeholder. Here and here. Let me just delete them and end date. Okay, so we're pretty much done with this one. All we need to do now is create our button. So we're going to step out of this row. And when the form ends, we're going to create a button tag with the uh, type of submit. Because this is actually going to submit our form. Then I'm also going to give this a class of PTN, which are bootstrap classes, then PTN and primary for the color. Let me also include some text here. Let's say submit. And we're still not done yet. I'm also going to use large, so btn. Should I use large? Nah. But what I'm going to do is with 100. This is going to spread it. Uh, it's going to take up 100% of the, of the remaining width. And yeah, let's do a shadow. Shadow. It's just too much. So if it's too much, then you could use SM shadow, small shadow, but still a bit of a shadow there. And it, it makes the, the button just pop out a little bit. Yeah, so we're finished with our form. Uh, next up, we can actually, what do I have here? Oh yeah, I still need this for icons. Do I need this for icons? Yeah, for a smiley face and so forth and so on. So I'm not going to use Bootstrap anymore. I'm going to use Font Awesome after that. Let me just grab and drop it up here. And let's do it this way. Okay. Okay, so we're done with this part. Now let's actually go to JavaScript. So let's go over to our JavaScript folder and to JavaScript folder, our JavaScript file. And first things first, we're going to grab onto all of the elements that we need from the DOM. So let's do here a comment, DOM elements, DOM. So I'm going to use the, let's use the const keyword. What am I doing? Const, <laughs> there we go. Uh, let's uh, select the first one, which is going to be the leave form. So leave request form. Now you could use get element by ID, you could use query selector, whatever you wish. I'm going to normally when I'm selecting IDs, I'm using get element by ID. So let's go to the document, get element by ID. I'm going to grab onto the, let's go over to HTML and actually grab onto it. Where do we have it? Where do we have a form? There's a header, there's a leave form. Let's paste it in here. Let's check it really quick. And there's our form. Okay. Now I could now create the next variable using const, but I'm going to do something else. I'm going to type in comma and type in first name. So this is also possible if you never used it. So first name, document, query selector, oh, get element by ID. I'm so used to use query selector. Let's grab onto the first name. Name. And then comma again, last name. Document, <clears throat> sorry about that. Mm. Get element by ID, let's grab onto the last name. Then comma again, we need our employee ID. So employee ID document. Wait, what are you doing? Get element, whoa, get element by ID. Employee, what am I doing? Employee, sorry about my typos. Next one is going to be initial remaining 
days. So let's go down here. Let's just check, check, check. Uh, should be employee ID then remaining days. Hmm. But I'm going to describe this as initial remaining days. So initial remaining days document because the 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 remaining days will be actually sub will be the result of the subtraction. So get element by ID again. Well, never did a live stream coding, so kind of nervous. Okay, <laughs> let's paste it in here. Let's do the next one. We got our start date and our end date. So start date document get element get element by ID. start date and the last one will be end date. Again document get element by ID and let's grab on to the end date. Okay, so we should have everything. Yo. Now if you're asking yourself why I'm not grabbing on to to this right here, to our button, it's going to, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to grab onto this later on. Okay, so let's use our leave request form. Let's actually, let's do something with our form. Let's do the following. Let's, uh, let's stop it from submitting because as you can see, if I click on submit, then the page refresh is actually trying to submit. I have to miss. Hey, sorry about that. Who? Gesundheit. Okay, so let's grab on. We have our form. Now I'm going to add an event to it. But um, I could use uh, add event listener and listen for a submit. But I'm going to do something else. And let me actually show you. So add event listener. And we're going to use the event of submit. Okay, I could do this and then use an arrow function, but I'm going to do something else. I'm going to tell it that on submit, pretty straightforward. Now on submit, and I'm going to now assign it to a anonymous arrow function, and also going to uh, have within here a event. So, go in here and I'm going to prevent now targeting this event I'm going to prevent prevent default and this is actually a function prevent default okay so if I do this and I try to submit it's no longer submitting so it's it's preventing the default behavior of a form which is to submit itself okay Now, when we're submitting, let's go to our finished project. When we are submitting our information, let's, let's just type something in here. Dun -dun, dun -dun. Some kind of ID. Uh, ooh, that's a lot of days. And let's also put in here a couple of days. Now, when we're submitting our form, actually a new page opens. And we can achieve this by using, well, grabbing onto the DOM and inserting something in it. So let's go to our JavaScript back and let's create our leave request. This is the leave request form and we are submitting a request. So I'm going to use here the create, I'm going to create a leave request. Request. Okay, and this is actually going to be a function now. When this function is executed, a request is going to be created. Now let's create a function. I can use const. Ah, let's actually use function create leave request. 
open close parenthesis and let's go in here and let's first of all start by creating a variable using the let keyword this time and I'm going to create now a leave request uh, actually a element in the DOM I'm going to call it leave request if I can type leave and request correctly okay so we are going to assign this to the document and create element and within here we're going to pass in the element that we wish to create we're going to create a general div okay so this leave request its inner HTML is going to be composed of the following I'm going to use backticks this time and within here well now I have to actually create this HTML element. It's much easier to actually create it in HTML and then just copy and paste it in here. So let's go to our HTML file and just going to create leave request. Okay, now let's see. We need to create exactly what we have the, the head of here, almost exactly. But we have a couple of exceptions. So I'm going to copy our section. Oh, actually, wait just a second. What did I do? What did I do here? Uh, I'm going to copy the header. Go down here. then create a main tag with a class of container and this is going to take a while uh, let's just see now i need to create again first name and then insert exactly what the first name is last name is insert what the last name is and so far and so on so let's just start just go ahead and create it i'm going to create a section tag within the section tag we're going to have again class of mb actually of row and then mb dash free doesn't matter which order you type them in but i want to to be clear that first of all this has this is a row Okay, then I'm just going to keep create a couple of them. I'm going to copy and paste in the, the other ones because it's pretty much repetitive. What is important, on the other hand, is um, what kind of variables we're going to insert here. So let's see, we're going to then create a div with a class of column. It's also going to have a leading six class and a font medium class font medium oh yeah this leading six doesn't exist anymore it doesn't even matter okay within here i'm going to have a label the class of should i even use no just let me just use the label tag here. So a label tag and it's going to have the text of first name. And after our label tag, we're going to have a span tag. And within the span tag, now I'm going to insert our first name variable, which we have here our first name so we're going to copy this uh, paste it in here but actually i'm going to use now interpolation so this should look something like this and then its value now i'm typing javascript actually here so let's just start let's just go ahead and copy this or control c cut it out and paste it in here okay now you can see what is actually happening so whatever hey 
that's not right. You should end here. So whatever I will type in here as a value, after submitting it, it should add to, to the new to the new leave request. And all of this should be then added. To, to, to our body. And for this, we're going to, first of all, need to remove this request. So re remove the request form and insert the leave request itself. So let's go, go ahead go to the document and grab onto the using, uh, you could use, we could use query selector. Yeah, we're gonna, gonna, going to grab onto a class. So let's use query selector. And I'm going to grab onto the class of leave request which if we go back to our HTML is this section right here so we are going to remove from the container the entire form section but we're going to leave the container intact because now I'm going to grab onto the container so we're grabbing onto the leave request and we're going to use the remove operator on it Okay, so if I would submit this, let's just see, uh, it doesn't work yet, then it's going to remove this from the DOM. And after I remove it, I'm going to insert document.querySelector, I'm going to insert in the container so we're going to grab onto the container class. And I'm going to add this element right here. So I'm going to use append child. And within here, we can append now our leave request div. Okay. So let's just try this. It's not working yet because cannot read property of nor value. Oh, because I don't have anything in here. If I type up something in here, then we still have a problem. Cannot read property of null value. Why is that? First name dot value. Hmm. Okay, name, sorry about that, uh, boom. Okay, so we just, let me do this again. Let's type in here, Norbert, type your own name if you wish, submit, and now we got first name, Norbert, and I'm missing here, first name, two dots. So Norbert, and there we go, there's Norbert. Uh, we could obviously, Add to this a class. Let's say text primary. And now if I would add my name again, then it's going to be blue. I don't know. We'll see about that later on. Now I need to repeat this operation. So I'm going to copy and paste in a couple of things. For example, the next thing will be the last name, which is going to be exactly the same thing. Okay, so Norbert, then Menhart. And if I submit, then we have a problem again. Last name, value, last, Okay. So this is working, but I really want to add here a condition. So I don't want this to be just automatically executed. I actually want to add a condition. So I would say if 
let's say first name is a empty string and actually I can use or or the last name is also an empty string then we're going to alert that we have a problem so let's say complete all fields okay but else execute this code right here execute the function which is going to create the leave request form so if i try to submit now wait what are you doing so if oh sorry about that <laughs> the value is empty so value yes i'm hungry i know i know so if these two fields are empty if i complete this it will still not work both fields need to have something in there and then it works okay pretty simple uh, but there is an alternative to using this if statement and there's the, the ternary operator. So I would get rid of this if statement, also this query brackets, and would just use here a question mark. So if these are, and don't need now the or, we need comma. So if this is not fulfilled, then this happens else two dots don't need the else keyword we don't need this this function will be executed let me just show you that it's going to do the exactly the same thing so again we are getting an alert here and if we try to if we have something in there click on submit then it's executing pretty cool isn't it okay now let's move on let's actually should I create all of the conditions? Yeah, let's create all of the conditions. So all of our fields need to be completed in order for the code to execute. I'm just going to copy and paste in the rest of the code. Oh, let me type actually out. This is actually a pretty good exercise. So if the employee ID dot value, because it needs its value, value, is again empty so it's an empty string then the code should not execute and also if the remaining days are empty so initial remaining days are also a empty string so there's nothing in there then the code should uh, well we should get an alert so again we will hey what are you doing why are you executing um, ba, 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 because we missing the value value and now it has a value okay so name first name last name still doesn't work employee id still doesn't work and if i type in now the remaining days now it works okay now all we have to do is also populate our 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 request our leave request so let's go ahead and add a couple of other fields. I would say the, should I copy and paste this in? Uh, no, let me actually show you this. So it's another section. We're going to have here, again the row, this should be uh, employee ID. This is going to have the employee ID as the value. Why am I having here indigo class? Don't need you. Just need text primary. Okay, so again, employee ID and this class should be text primary. Okay, user should be initial
initial remaining days. Also the title here should be initial remaining days, initial leave days. Uh, let's see. Pam, 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 pam. Okay, there we go. Initial leave days, this is good, this is good, this is good. <clears throat> Our last two will be the starting date and the ending date. So I'm just going to copy the section again. Paste it in here. So this is going to be start date and this is going to be end date. Boom. So let's change this to start date and end date. Okay, we have this. Once again, don't forget coupon codes for the courses down in the description below. Please check them out. So the last thing that we need is if we take a look at our finished project are these right here. How many days are we actually requesting? How many leave days will remain? And then the day that we submitted the request. But these two right here, these are complicated. And this, for this, we need, we need a bit of JavaScript. So should I actually put them in already? Yeah. Now I'm going to create another section. So I could just paste this in. This is going to have a request leave. and then the remaining leave days. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it has it. Set date and date. Uh, okay, because this is multiplying start date at value and date at value because I didn't put anything in there. No problem. And the very last thing that we need is, well, down here after this section, let me just check this out. Uh, we're going to have our span. Just check my notes here. Wait just a second. So I'm going to create another div with a column. Actually, just going to copy it in here. And we don't need this. Okay, submitted the day that was submitted. We don't need this, we don't need this. So let's let's actually do this. Let's get the get submitted timestamp. That is pretty easy. So I'm going to go down here. Let's create a function. Is the function keyword of get uh, get submitted timestamp. So what are we trying to do here? We're going to look when this request was submitted. And for this, we're going to need the date objects. So first of all, I'm going to use the this keyword because it needs to go outside of our, whoa. Uh, I 
offset of the scope. So let's do a this dot today, and we're going to assign this to the new to a new date um, object. Now, next up, we need the date, the time, and the date time. So for the date, I'm going to create a const. Let me actually scroll up here. Let's create a variable using const, and let's say date. And we're going to assign this using backticks to today dot get full year. And from this, we're going to then subtract, actually, well, it's just going to be a, a division between them. Again, today and dot get month. Okay. And we're also going to add to this, let me just think about, we're going to add to this plus one, because it starts at zero and I actually want to have numbers. And then again, I'm going to have another division sign and hey, there's too much space here. And also get the date. So again, today dot get date. Uh, sorry about that. If you can hear my daughter, she's not in her best mood today. Okay, so we have our date. Oh, no, let me just think about this. Yeah, now we need to get the time. So let's create another const. Time, and we're going to assign this again using backticks to today get hour. I don't need this keyword. Dot get hours. You're going to have a semi column here. Actually, column, and then you're going to get the minutes and then the seconds. So we're going to get the exact timestamp. Day dot get minutes. And then today and get seconds. Okay, so we had our date and we got our time. Now let's put these two together. Say const uh, date. And time, so date time. And we're going to add this date plus, I'm going to use here division. Uh, let me actually add some space to it. And plus time. You know what? I'm going to use backticks. So I'm going to use template literals. Say date time. And there we go. Now this function is then going to return our date time. Okay, and it's going to be inserted here. So as soon as I submit this, it's going to look for not the other. It's going to look for when I submitted it, whatever dates I choose here. So this, it was submitted today, seven o'clock, so far and so on, which is the exact time. Okay, so pretty easy. The next steps are a bit more complicated. Now we need to calculate somehow how many leave day, how many leave days we have. 
And this is a bit complicated, but I, I, I found, I actually found, and I <laughs> merged a couple of uh, functions in order to, to get this working. So the problem is that we do have a date, but um, how does the program know which one are week weekdays and which are weekend days and also which are <laughs> well days off so i found here a pretty interesting function hope you will enjoy it we're going to add to the date object a prototype okay so let's start out by creating let's see let's start by getting the date object so date dot now, if you want to add a prototype, you need to use the prototype keyword. As you can see here, date constructor prototype. Okay, we're going to add to this the let's just call it working days from. Okay, so let's use here a function. We actually use an arrow function, and this is going to take in the from date. So first of all, we need to make sure that this argument is valid. So let's do here a if if not from this, I'm going to first of all use the negation if it doesn't exist or is not a number. Uh, from date and to close this up again or this is less than from date so whatever is passed in here needs to fulfill these conditions and if these conditions are two true then return minus one Now we need to, this is a pretty complicated, we need to clone this date in order to avoid missing or, or original dates and time. So we're going to do this by let's say let the from day, which we're going to assign to a new date object. Uh, let's see, we're going to pass in here the from date and going to get time. Use the get time function, uh, get time operator on it. I'm going to create another variable, the to date, to day. Again, I'm going to assign this to a new date object. And this is going to be, I just say so. Let's use this keyword get time again. And the last thing that we need is, so I'm going to have this, then this is the number of working days. going to be one. Okay, now I'm going to reset uh, the entire time. So we're going to do, let's just see, uh, the from day dot set hour, because we also set hours, will be now zero, 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 and zero. And I'm going to do the, exactly the same thing for uh, two days. Okay. Next up, we're going to loop through them by with by using a while loop. So while the from days are less than the two days.
we're going to take the front days, we're going to set the, ah, uh, not the date, yeah, set the date, actually, to from day dot get date, and we're going to add one to it. Next up, let's create a variable. I'm going to call day, and we're going to set this to from day dot get day. Now, if the day is not equal to zero, and the day is not equal to six, then we're going to have a number of working days. And we're going to start iterating them. Okay. So let's also end this with by console logging our number of working days. I just copy this. Number of working days, also want to have it in the console. And let's return from this function at the end the number of working days. Okay, so pretty straightforward. All we need to do now is create a function which is going to calculate the leave days and calculate the remaining leave days. So let's do this section. We're going to do the calcul calculation of the leave days above the date. So let's type in a comment of create I'll actually calculate the exact leave days. So let's create a function. Calculate leave days. We're going to pass in here the start date and a end date. So it's going to have two arguments. So let's create first of all a const of start date, which is going to be a new day. You're going to assign it to a new day object. Date, just a day, date object. So it's going to be the start date. And then we're going to have an end date. So another const. Hello const, which is going to be the end date. And this is also going to be a new date object. And it's going to have the end date in it. Okay, now these two, we get another variable, going to result in the leave, leave days, which is going to be end date. And now I can use our working days from operate on it. And as you can remember, this is awaiting for a from argument. So this is where our start date, uh, this right here comes into play. Okay. Now at the end of this function, we're just going to return our leave days. And that's it. Now these leave days, or calculate leave days, we need to put them somewhere. And they're going to be here. Let me just check my, my code. So I returned, I returned the slack, calculate leave days, I returned it up here. Now what I'm just going to copy this section in. And paste it right after this get was it after or before? Ah, it was before. 
so right after this section ends and before the column starts. Okay, so this is where we're going to add this in. So as I said, the calculate leave days function awaits two arguments, the start date and the end date. As soon as they are passed in, they're going to be converted into date objects. Then they're going to be passed into this operator right here, which is going to do this prototype, which is going to then calculate the exact, the exact leave days. Now also we need to calculate the remaining leave days. So let's also do this. This is actually pretty simple. We're just going to, let's also do it up here. Calculate remaining leave days, or leave days remaining whatever we should call it, to call it. So function, calculate, remaining leave days, and this is going to take in one single argument, which is going to be the initial remaining leave days. So initial remaining leave days, and it's just going to return the initial remaining leave days minus the calculated leave days which is going to again take in the start date dot value and the end date dot value. Okay, pretty simple. So this should already work. Let's try this out. Norbert, Menhart, some kind of ID. We have 15 days left and I want to go from tomorrow till, let's say till the ninth. And we are getting a problem. Let me just check this out. From that is not defined. Form date, uh oh. Uh, because I mistyped something from from, 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 where, where do I have it? Form date is not defined at 131. Yeah, you, from, form, from. Okay, so let's try this again. From, not a misspell. Okay, some kind of name, some kind of name, some kind of ID, uh, 13 days. We're gonna need to check this if this really, really works. So I should have, <laughs> I should, hey, did from, get time is not a function. 136. Uh, get time, get time from date. Hmm. Why isn't this working? This is then passed up to number 80, yeah, which is trying to calculate it. Uh, uh -huh. Let me just check what I messed up. So get submission timestamp. That was working. Get, uh, messed up something at the prototype. Just a second, just a second. This is troubleshooting live, making mistakes live. Let me get a sip of water. So let me, oh, you know what? Why did I use here error function? That is extremely strange. I shouldn't have done that. Yep, 
Oh, it's working. The problem was the, the error function, because this keyword works uh, completely different in an error function. So sorry about that. This is almost a rookie mistake. Yeah, so is this working? We Let me check this again. Is it refresh? Let's see. Norbert Einhardt. We have some kind of D number and we have uh, 12 days left. And we're going to go from tomorrow until Friday the 10th. So this should be 10, 10 days and we should only remain with two days. Yep, so we had 12, we have taken 10 and we're remaining with two days. If you want, I can do a much longer check. So let's see, actually, you know what? I know that this works. <laughs> Uh, let's just continue on. We still have here a couple of buttons to add and two other forms. So let's do this. Let's go, let's go up here. And right after our get submission timestamp, right after this div, we need two buttons. We can either approve or decline. Uh, this request. So let's create another section. You know what? I'm going to copy it in and I'm going to explain it because it's pretty easy. So these are the buttons. We are creating a class of display flex. We're going to justify the content with space between. We're going to add a margin to the top of three. And then we're going to create two submit buttons. Okay, so two buttons with a type of submit. And the class have the classes of btn success and btn danger and they're going to have a on click function in there so exactly as you would have in react or angular or so forth and so on okay so it's pretty much the same as uh, i can target this if, if i'm creating this i i would need to go into the dom again don't want that I just want to have the on click. I want to have the function in here and I'm going to create this on leave approval. And then we have another one on leave reject. Okay. So these are two functions and each of these functions are going to uh, do two separate things. So let's say if on approve. Okay, so let's see that let's say that our leave is approved. Then we're going to create a function on leave approve. And this function we're going to get from the DOM using query selector or container again, or class of container. Container. <laughs> and we're going to change its inner HTML. We're going to do the following. So using backticks. Oh, I don't want to type this out. <laughs> I'm just going to copy it in. Because this is not React. Uh, Emmet is not working here. This is just horrible typing this out. So we're going to create a header. Like that we head up here. Text center, margin bottom. We're going to insert our friend here. Uh, actually, we're going to insert a emoji smiley face. We're going to have a text of your leave was approved, each one with the text, and then a button which is going to send us back. And this button is going to have again a on click event which is going to have just a location reload. And this function, location, where you are now, and the reload function will just reload the page. Basically, it's going to do the following thing. Let's add here a couple of things. Let's see, and don't have to select anything. Okay, so we have those two buttons. The decline button doesn't do anything because the function is not yet created. But if I click on approve, it's going to display a new page for me, this happy smiley face. And it's going to tell me that uh, our leave was approved. Now also the back button, just going to reload everything, is going to send me back to the, to the initial page. So it's not going to send me back, but it's going to reload the page as if I would click on this reload button. Okay, now we need to do Almost the same thing for our leave function. So I'm sorry, for our rejection function. So we're going to go down here, 
and type in function again on leave reject. And we're going to do the following. We're going to go to the document. Actually, I could use here, uh, whatever. Use an error function. Document create select. I'm always thinking how can I write this um, much shorter. So the container again. And we're going to go to its inner HTML. And I'm just going to copy in the code. It's almost exactly the same code. The difference is we're going to have a red button. And the title will be your leave has been declined. Okay, so let's try this again. If I click on submit, we're going to have this alert. If I type in something, 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 some kind of dates, which doesn't don't even exist, submit. And if I decline, then I'm going to have another page with a sad face. Woo! So that's pretty much it for the project. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, thumbs down. If you have any kind of questions or suggestions, as always, leave them in the comment section below. If you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. You're posting new projects like this. Woo! Each and every time. And uh, yeah, again, coupon codes are in the description down below. Check out my courses. Check out my blog. The code for, for the project, as always, will be down in the blog. Uh, we'll be down in the comment section below, which is going to send you to my blog where I post all of my projects and also the entire code. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day. I'm going to now end the stream. Hope you enjoyed it and catch you next time. Bye-bye.